Jesus came. Why did he come? He came for all of us. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. All things are part of it. Behold, the new has come. And then you can enter into a covenant relationship with God so that no relation of yours should die a Christless death. All are sin, but the gift of God is eternal life. Good evening viewers and welcome to another edition of our program God and Your Family. We are continuing with our new series on the night seasons of our times. And with me, our usual discussants, to my extreme left, Pastor Mrs. Hassana Hukujiat, you are welcome. Thank you very much, Mommy. Good evening, viewers. And immediately next to her is Reverend Dr. Ambassador Sam Krakavik Kujiat. Pastor, you are welcome. Thank you. COVID-19 survival. <laughs> <laughs> and to my immediate left is our sister, Pastor Esther Adetoro Amlabu. My sister, you are welcome. Thank you, Mommy. Good evening, viewers. Today, we are looking at the topic, barrenness. And we are looking at the issue of... Uh, uh, the family of Sarah and Abraham. Barrenness is inability to conceive and bear children, described as infertility, sterility, unfruitfulness, unproductiveness. This is a night season challenge, affliction, and torment that some families have faced from generation to another generation. Our discussion on this night season of barrenness focuses on the family of Father Abraham and Mother Sarah. God came to Abraham in a vision and said, Don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. We'll find this in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. What did Abraham complain of or lament about to God? What was God's response? Now I want to read Genesis 15 verses 2 and 3. But Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, no one born in my house is my heir. So, uh, Esther, my immediate left, what was Abraham's complaint? Now we're talking about uh, nine seasons of our time in terms of barrenness. Abraham complained to God, I am childless. You know, like we read in uh, f the Genesis 15, the Lord said, I am your exceeding great reward. Yes. Now it's like Abraham lamenting and say, God, you said you are my exceeding great reward. You are rewarding me. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a child. So where is the reward? <laughs> That's what it's, it's like he's saying. And it's, it's like, is it this servant in my house, this Eliezer, that is going to inherit everything that I have? Mm -hmm. And I think I have, we have a lot of people like that. God has given you words and words and words. I am your exceeding great reward. I will do this. Where is the reward? Mm -hmm. Just like Abraham. So, Pastor, mm -hmm. God's response to Abraham, if we look at verse 4 of that Genesis 15. Yes. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, mm. This one will not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Look now toward heaven and count the stars, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and he count, accounted it to him for righteousness. So God, what did God actually say to Abraham? Well, God responded well to Abraham. He mm. gave him a good word. Yes. He said, Eleazar will not be your heir. Mm -hmm. He said, your heir would be a child from your own body, mm. born to you. Mm. He said, your descendants, man, will be like the stars, mm. uncount, un uncountable. Mm. 
Then you know what Abraham had? Mm. And he believed God. Mm. And God said, because you believe me, this is your righteousness. Mm. So, so viewers, you see, when we are facing through the challenges of the night season, it is very important that we hear from God. Mm. And when God talks to us concerning the challenge, it is extremely important that we believe him. Mm. Yes. Because when we believe him, we will realize that it will be counted unto us as righteousness. In fact, in Luke chapter 1 verse 45, he says, Blessed is she who believes. There shall be a, a performance, performance of those things told yeah. her of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in your own night uh, challenges you are passing through now, what is God saying to you about it? Your own may not be physical barren, uh, barrenness. You may have children, but you are barren. The works of nothing you do prospers. Mm -hmm. What is God saying to you? Can you dare believe him? Mm -hmm. God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. Has he said it? Dare believe him and you will see that it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. And so my sister, what happened to Abraham when he was 99 years old? Hmm. In Genesis um, 17, 1 to 6, we found that the Lord appeared to Abraham when he was 99 years old. And these are the things the Lord said to him. He said, Abraham, I am almighty. Mm. Walk before me and be blameless. That means I am El Shaddai, yes. the fully breasted almighty God. I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. Mm. Wow. This is a person that didn't have a child. Mm -hmm. God is telling him, you will be the father of many nations. Mm. No longer shall your name be called Abraham. But your name shall be Abraham. Mm. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations out of you. Mm. And kings shall come out of you. Hallelujah. Wow. What a wonderful visitation. Yes. Wonderful reminder. God is God Almighty. Amen. God is the one that makes. Mm -hmm. He said, I will make you. Mm -hmm. And God speaks those things that be not as though they've already come to Amen. pass. You know, you know Abraham say, means father of many nations. And so he changed his name. And say you are going to be the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Hallelujah. So you see, God didn't just make him, tell him he will make him fruitful. But he said, I'll make you exceedingly fruitful. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you've been trusting God for a child. And every time, the devil keeps mocking you. Mocking you. For how long will you continue to hold on to this God? Mm. Tell him that God is not only making you fruitful, but he's making you extremely fruitful. And not just that. He's not just giving you any child. Kings are coming out of your Amen. life. Amen. Special children are coming out of your Amen. life. Amen. When God gives, he doesn't just, he gives you, he makes a choice gift so that you will live to praise him and thank him all the days of your life. Mm. By the time of that visit to Abraham, Abraham already had, had Ishmael by Hagar. Mm. So how did God address Sarah's barrenness? As we read from Genesis chapter 17, verses 15, 16, and 19. Okay, in verse 15, the Lord said, Abraham, um, Sarah will no longer be called Sarai, but she shall be called Sarah. No longer individual for herself, a princess to herself, mm -hmm. but a princess of many nations. Mm -hmm. She's no longer now, is a change of name to suit the situation that is coming. Mm -hmm. So there, is, there has to be a change of name, not to just that individual, that one thing, 
but to suit the many miracles that God is bringing. So there is, God, when God wants to do something, he, he equips to, for, to prepare for that miracle that is coming. That is why it has to change the name of Sarai from Sarai to Sarah. And he said he will give her the son from our own. A son of our own. Not even the one. Yes, Abraham already had Ishmael. But he said, no, that is not the, the son of promise. That son that will come from Sarah is the one that is the child of promise. Mm. So God has to change certain situations to suit what he wants to do. Even in our own situation too. He will make so many things happen. Though, although Abraham was like getting satisfied with the alternative. Oh God bless this Ishmael. I am okay with Ishmael. But the Lord said no. It is the one that will come from Sarah that is the one. So we will not be satisfied with alternative. Mm -hmm. And just settle for alternative. Mm -hmm. But we will go for the one that God has said. If God says it then he will do it Amen. and he will make it happen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what, uh, we have seen that Abraham pleaded with God. And because of this, to give him confidence, God had to enter into a covenant relationship yes. with him. Pastor, what is what do we really mean when God enters into a covenant with us? When God God decides, he's the one that takes take the initiative yes. to draw you to himself. Yes. And then spell out what he will do. And your own part is simply to follow. Mm. Agree with him. Mm. That's all. And do you see that this covenant that God made with Father Abraham not only affected uh, Isaac, but is still speaking for the state nation of Israel today. He says, for the, the descendants, all of them, everlasting covenant, everlasting agreement. And God is ever faithful to the covenant. Yes. Because God cannot lie. Mm -hmm. And so, my sister, how did God remove Sarah's barrenness? Um, from Genesis 21, 1 to 8, we see that the Lord visited Sarah. Mm -hmm. As he had said. Mm. You know, when God says something, count it done. Yes. Mm. So how did he remove Sarah's barrenness? He visited Sarah. As he had spoken. And the Lord fulfilled his promise to Sarah. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. In his old age. At the set time in which God had spoken to him. This was Sarah that was 90 and Abraham was about a hundred. But God fulfilled the promise. Mm. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born to him, whom Sarah brought to him, Isaac, which is laughter. laughter. So God put a laughter, in, God put laughter in the mouth of Abraham and the mouth of Sarah. God fulfilled his promise. And you know, his historians say it took 25 years. Mm. Can you, be, can you imagine waiting, waiting for a promise to be fulfilled for 25, 25 years? Wonderful. Well, when God has said it, God will do it. Yes. That is the encouragement we want to give you, our viewers. If God has said something, no matter how long it takes, I am speaking to myself too. Mm. God has done it and you can rest assured. Go to bed, go to sleep, it will come to pass. Are you going through this night season of barrenness? Mm. Your age is immaterial. Yes. Mm. Father Abraham was visited when he was 99 years old. And his wife, Sarah, was 89. Because by the time Isaac was born, he was 100 and Sarah was 90. Mm. Naturally, we would have been told that your time has gone. Mm. Especially the woman. Mm. Especially the woman. Ah, many of since uh, almost 50 years ago. Uh, you just forget this. Your time has gone. I'm telling you, believe God. Yes. Believe God. Keep saying what he has told you. He says, whatever I hear you say into my ears, that's what I will do for you. Keep saying it, and it will surely come to pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, uh, my sister Esther, what was God's promise to his people? 
in Exodus 23, 25 and 26. Exodus 23, 25 and 26 says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. Mm -hmm. He will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. You shall serve the Lord your God. Are you serving the Lord your God? Then he said, you will not cast your young. He first said, he will bless your bread and water. Mm -hmm. And when God says you will bless, he will bless. Mm -hmm. It's not like man that says, I will bless and he will not do anything. God said, he will bless, he will bless. He will not cast your young. No miscarriage of any kind. Mm. No miscarriage. None shall be barren. This means God will deliver us from the night season of barrenness. If God said none shall be barren, then none shall be barren. So, are you or do you know someone or a family battling with barrenness? The Spirit of God knows you by name. And your tears of sorrow and of bitter spirit like Hannah or like Rachel that grabbed her husband Jacob crying out, give me a son. God has seen your tears. Mm -hmm. So cheer up. Stop weeping. God has heard your cry and directed you to listen to him today. Can we listen to him today? They are sure that there is no distance of all time in the glory of God that has surrounded you all through this program. Mm -hmm. God is not a man that he should lie. When God says to you, fear not, I will give you a son. Believe that Exodus 23, verses 25 and 26, that you will serve the Lord your God and see what God says he will do for you. See what he says he will do. That he will bless your bread, he will bless your water, and if God says he will bless your bread, that means he will give you bread. Mm. You will have bread mm. that he can bless. Yes. And then he says he will remove sickness from you, no miscarriages, no barrenness. Mm. The number of your days he will fulfill. The challenge is, are you serving the Lord? Do you know him? He is not a man to promise what he cannot do. Surely God's words are reliable and dependable. Right. Psalm 30 verses 5 and 6 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, I want to congratulate you because your season of joy is at hand. Amen. You are already on, only counting days to your day of celebration mm. when you will carry your baby mm. in your hands. Amen. Amen. Remember Luke 145, blessed is she that believes. There shall be a performance. Believe him. He is not a liar. What he did to, for Sarah, he will do for you. Immaterial of how old you are. This God is specialist impossible. Are you facing through impossibility impossibilities? And people are telling you that I, for how long will you wait? You're already 60 years old. Mother Sarah had her baby at 90 years old. God who made you is able to give you a brand new womb that we carry a pregnancy. And there's no record in the Bible that Mother Sarah had her baby through surgery <laughs> at 90 years old. So you will also have your own baby. You will carry this, your baby. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now we're talking about uh, nine seasons of our time in terms of barrenness. Abraham complained to God that I am childless. You know, like we read in uh, f the Genesis 15, the Lord said, I am your exceeding great reward. Yes. 
Now it's like Abraham lamenting and say, God, you said you are my exceeding great reward. You are rewarding me, mm -hmm. and I don't have a child. So where is the reward? <laughs> That's what it's, it's like he's saying. And it's, it's like, is it this servant in my house, this Eliezer, that is going to inherit everything that I have? Hmm. And I think I have, we have a lot of people like that. God has given you words and words and words. I am your exceeding great reward. I will do this. Where is the reward? Mm. Just like Abraham. God responded well to Abraham. He mm. gave him a good word. Yes. He said, Eliezer will not be your heir. Mm -hmm. He said, your heir will be a child from your own body, mm. born to you. Mm. He said, your descendants man, will be like the stars. No. Uncount, un uncountable. Mm. Then you know what Abraham had? Mm. And he believed God. Mm. And God said, Because you believe me, this is your righteousness. Mm. Hmm. In Genesis um, 17 1 to 6, we found that the Lord appeared to Abraham when he was 99 years old. And these are the things the Lord said to him. He said, Abraham, I am almighty. Mm. Walk before me and be blameless. That means I am El Shaddai, yes. the fully breasted almighty God. I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. Mm. Wow. This is a person that didn't have a child. Mm -hmm. God is telling him, you will be the father mm -hmm. of many nations. Mm -hmm. No longer shall your name be called Abraham. But your name shall be Abraham. Mm -hmm. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations out of you. Mm. And kings shall come out of you. Hallelujah. What a wonderful visitation. Yes. Wonderful reminder. God is God Almighty. Amen. God is the one that makes. Mm -hmm. He said, I will make you. Mm -hmm. And God speaks those things that be not as though they've already come to Amen. pass. You know, you know Abraham say, means father of many nations. And so he changed his name. And say you are going to be the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so what, uh, we have seen that Abraham pleaded with God. And because of this, to give him confidence, God has to enter into a covenant relationship with him. Yes, Abraham already had Ishmael. But he said, no, that is not the, the son of promise. That son that will come from Sarah is the one that is the child of promise. Mm. So God has to change certain situations to suit what he wants to do. Even in our own situation too. He will make so many things happen. From Genesis 21, 1 to 8, we see that the Lord visited Sarah. Mm -hmm. As he had said. Mm. You know when God says something, count it done. Yes. Mm. If God has said something, no matter how long it takes, I am speaking to myself too. Mm. God has done it and you can rest assured. Go to bed, go to sleep, it will come to pass. Yes. If God said none shall be barren, then none shall be barren. So, we are telling you, congratulations. Your day of celebration is at hand. But you need to, you cannot serve the person you don't know. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. So if you have not given him your, uh, surrendered your life to him, this is where you begin. Mm. Let us pray. Pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I come to you. Forgive me all my sins. Give me all my sins. Please write my name in the book of write life. Write my name in the book of life. I repent of every sin. I repent of every the sin. ones I know and the ones I don't the ones know. I know and the ones I don't know. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Name. Let us go into the court of heaven. And get seated so that we can get a verdict of victory and triumph in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we thank you, Lord, 
Because even as we have come into the court of heaven, the blood of Jesus is speaking on our behalf, speaking of better things than that of Abel. The saints triumphant are seated. And we thank you, Lord God Almighty, because you said whatever you hear us say into your ears, that's what you will do for us. And so, Father, we are pleading a demand. Father God, that you give us the word, the verdict, even for this night season, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for our day of celebration is at hand. Amen. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And here, this is all our time permits. But don't forget to tune in again next week, same time, same station. Until then, God bless. Keep you and your wonderful families. Amen. Amen.